The Nornir, or Norns, which I briefly mentioned earlier, are described as three female divinities, which preside over the fates of mortals and gods alike. They are sometimes also described as belonging to the ranks of the Dísir. The Kleesby and Vigfason describe them as follows. Quote, the weird sisters of the old mythology, the three heavenly norns, Urther, Vrthandi, Skuld. They dwelt at the well Urther Brun and ruled the fate of the world. Three norns were also present at the birth of every man and cast the weird of his life. End quote. The descriptions of the norns seem to have many parallels to that of the Greek Moirai, or Fates, who are described as three sisters with the names Clotho, which means to spin or twist, in reference to the spinning of a mortal's life or fate, Lachesis, which means the disposer or distributor of lots or destiny, and Atropos, which means unchangeable or unflexible, and she was the one who chose the manner of death and ended the life of a mortal by cutting their thread. The Voluspa describes the Norns as maidens of much knowing who score onto wood, most likely in reference to the runes, which were sometimes communicated via strips of wood and the text specifically states that they made the laws and allotted life and fate to mortals. Quote, Thence come the maidens, mighty in wisdom, three from the dwelling down beneath the tree. Urth is one named, Verthandi is the next, on the wood they scored, and Skuld the third. Laws they made there, and life allotted to the sons of men, and set their fates. End quote. The meaning of the word Norn has been long debated. The Nordic Family Book, which is a Swedish encyclopedia printed between 1876 and 1993, states that one possibility of the meaning could be twisting in reference to the web of fate they are said to weave or twist together. Karen beck Pedersen, lecturer in Scandinavian studies at the University of Aarhus, Denmark, has argued Norn could be related to the Swedish dialect word Norna, a verb which means to secretly communicate, which once again could be alluding to the runes, the etymology of which we will look at shortly. The etymology of the names of the Norns has also been debated. However, Dr. John Lindau, a known authority on Germanic philology and Old Norse studies, says the following in his book, Norse Mythology. Quote, Urther is similar to the past tense of the verb verda, to become, and thus means something like became or happened. It is cognate with the Old English weird, fate or destiny. Verthandi is the present participle of verda, which means becoming or happening. And skuld is derived from the modal verb skulu, which is cognate with English shall and should, and probably then means is to be or will happen. Thus, these three norns in their names cover the past, the present and the future." End quote. This is really interesting, as the prophets and priestesses of Apollo, such as the Sibula or Sibyls in the Greek mythology, are described as knowing the things that were, the things that were to be, and that had been before. Herodotus in his histories also tells us about the Scythian diviners, and the description of the method of divination holds a striking similarity to that of the Norns. Quote, there are many diviners among the Scythians, who divine by means of many willow wands, as I will show. They bring great bundles of wands, which they lay on the ground and unfasten. 
and utter their divinations as they lay the rods down one by one, and while still speaking, they gather up the rods once more and place them together again. This manner of divination is hereditary among them. The Inaris, who are hermaphrodites, say that Aphrodite gave them the art of divination, which they practice by means of lime tree bark. They cut this bark up into three portions and prophesy while they braid and unbraid these in their fingers. End quote. In the passage from the Voluspa, which we recently looked at, the Norns were described as scoring onto wood. The logical inference here is that they were scoring the runes into wood, which is something that is mentioned in the sagas, where they talk of a kefli, or a round piece of wood, which was used to encrypt messages upon. The Cleesby and Vigfusson describe the kefli as, quote, a cylinder, stick, or piece of wood to carve runes or magical characters, end quote. This may hold significance, if you remember back to one of the proposed meanings of the word known, which was to secretly communicate. To further this idea, when we look at the Cleesby and Vigfusson, we find one of the proposed definitions for the word rune to be mystery. And the authors specifically mention that the word has previously been rendered as the Greek mysterion or mystery. This word holds more significance than one may immediately notice. And when we look at the LSJ, we can see the term is used of secret rites and the mystery religions, which brings us back to our realm of the Cybels and their oracular prophecies. Finally, the Cleesby and Vigfusson also mention that sometimes runes are described as being thrown like tokens, and specifically mentions a comparison between the Latin sortes or saws, which we saw earlier when looking at the divination practices of the Etruscans. Curiously, the Cleesby and Vigfusson also make a comparison to the Sibylline leaves used by the Cumaean Sibyl in the Aeneid. There is also the striking similarity between some of the Etruscan letters and the Germanic runes. It's also worth pointing out that we also find mention of similar runes and the practices of casting lots in some of the Welsh mythologies, but the authenticity of these runes are debated by scholars. If authentic, however, the similarities between the runes themselves and the practices are apparent. In addition to the information presented so far, we also have archaeological evidence of Viking Age burials which are identified as North Germanic seeresses. These burials are of females that have been given high status burials, and in some instances the graves contain wands as well as rare jewellery originating in Central Asia, which were otherwise unknown to the Scandinavian record. The seeds of henbane and cannabis have also been found contained within the burials, and one of the seeresses was prepared for her journey into the afterlife by being wrapped in a bear fur. We'll be looking at these burials in a future video. Before we move on, it's important to note that figures such as Circe, Medea, as well as the Cybels and priestesses from Greek mythology are sometimes also described as having wands, cauldrons, and an incredible knowledge of plants, medicine and drugs, as well as sometimes having the power of oracular prophecy. When one factors in Thor's supposed marriage, to a Cybel who he met in a northern region of Thrace, as mentioned in Snorri's prologue to the Prose Edda, one can't help but wonder if there is a nugget of truth buried underneath the mythology. <laughs> 